right, so Matt and I had talked about this a few months back. We've been running out of space inside the garage. Matt like, likes to keep it neat and tidy, so the decision has been made to build a shed. I'm gonna do a, a 12 by 20 foot long shed, or 12, 12 wide, 20 deep. Um, we were gonna put it actually here, is kind of what I was thinking, because it's flatter ground, it's close to the, close to the uh, yarn building, but Matt decided he wants to move it over by the warehouse, so I'm gonna get started on that in the next day or so, and we're gonna film some of the process. Not gonna be a how-to, but kind of a vlog style, like going through different steps that we're doing, you know, the forms, concrete, erecting the walls, doing some framing, some insulation possibly, roofing, that kind of thing. Just looking at sheds online, I, don't, I couldn't find a 12-foot wide, 20 deep deliverable shed um, there were kits available, but they're a lot of money, and I don't think they're built as well as what I'm going to build. Um, so uh, I think they're right around 10, 12 grand for that size um, for the way I want to build it. Um, in fact, we were at Home Depot just the other day, and a uh, what was it, 10 by 12 was almost six grand. So double that, you know, you're. 11, 12 grand. So anyway, we'll take you through the process. It's gonna be a fun little project. Uh, it's supposed to get hot, so I'm sure I'll be sweating. All right, before we go outside, um, I just wanna give you guys kind of a, a little insight as to material list to build the shed. Now, that none of the materials on here are gonna include forms for the foundation or anything. This is just for the shed itself. I've got nearly everything in here. The only thing I don't have specced out yet, and I'm gonna to have to make a trip to the store because Home Depot doesn't have another site, is I want a, um, I want an outswing exterior double door, and I want a metal door, or at least very at least fiberglass. So I'll have to go to the store and inspect that out with them. Um, anyway, so we've got so far, I've, I, it's not in any particular order. I purchased it in the correct order. So when I'm building something, I go, I kind of in my head, I go from the ground up. So for instance, this, this here, this is gonna be uh, the sheeting for the floor, okay, roofing. So picked a, the JF is a good roofing. I've used it before, um, really good. So we got roofing nails. We've got our uh, 12 foot studs. This is this is basically for the top and bottom plate um, on the walls. Yeah. These are our starter shingles. So this is good. The very first course of shingles uh, before the very first course goes on, right at the eave, these go on first. Got Tyvek wrap. That'll wrap the whole building um, prior to putting the T111 siding on. Hurricane clips, This is these are gonna mount to the top plate, and then when the rafter comes through, it'll come through this, this plate and tie into it. So that's our connection point there. Um, this, these are for the underlayment for the uh, roofing felt. Um, we've got 100 uh, studs, basically. I'm gonna build trusses out of these and do uh, frame the walls with these. Um, here we've got, this is our cedar, cedar fake cedar trim it's cedar texture but this is a trim for all the corners for trimming off the all the walls basically and around the door um, these are our ridge shingles here so these are going to go over the top of the ridge up here we don't have a hip roof it's just a ridge like that uh, hurricane straps for the end walls where they front and back of the building um, and we have just construction screws for screwing down the sheeting on the floor this is our OSB. This is for our this is our roof sheeting. I'm going to use that T111 siding. We've got our um, pressure treated. This is what I'm going to use to build the, the floor going on. This is basically the floor joist. Um, now I did. I'm going to do three basically three strips of foundation. They're going to be you know 12 to 16 inches wide, one on each end or one on each side of the building, and one right down the center. So the free free span between each of the foundations is only 48 inches. So with that being said, you don't need a tall uh, a floor joist. A short, a, a two by four is plenty. It's gonna handle 110 pounds per square foot. And we won't even be near that. So um, we've got some galvanized, um, um, basically this is edge, drip edge. This is gonna go on the rake, rake of the roof. Um, so this will, where the roof ends at either end of the building, this will trim that out and, and water that this will slide, this end will slide under the roofing material, this end will be over the front, the fascia basically, or the, or the siding. So that way water it drips down, there's a little kick on it, so it drips, comes away from the wall and then drips down. 
Um, what do we got here? This is uh, just some more two by two by four by 12. I added, I need more than I thought. So I just added more. That's also for top and bottom plates and for, um, for uh, the, the um, what was I gonna say, trusses. Um, then this is our roof vents, ridge vents. So these go on the very top of the, the roof and then the, the shingles, I'm gonna put three of these in. So there'll be nine feet of ridge vent that will help, you know, get the heat out of the building. And then this is our, uh, this is our underlayment for the roofing. So that's pretty much covers everything that I'm gonna need except for paint, caulking, and uh, the doors. So I think, I think it's pretty complete. Um, so as, as, as I'm going through in the stages, you know, we'll, we'll probably film a framing stage and you know, all that kind of stuff. So you'll get to see a lot of this stuff and, and I'll kind of go back and forth between maybe show what, which parts I'm using now and, and that kind of thing. So it's a pretty simple build. It's like, it's just like building a little tiny house really. Uh, we may, I'm going to try to talk Matt into spray foam insulating it since we're going to put material in there that we don't want getting super hot day after day after day. I think spray foaming would be a good idea. Maybe even do a little, uh, like a, a little solar panel on there with a, with a ridge uh, a fan. So it blows, sucks the hot air out. I'm going to go sweat. It's pretty hot outside. It's supposed to be hot all week. So foundation first, and then we'll, uh, get some framing in. And so what I'm doing is I'm pouring basically a concrete beam on either side and that, that will uh, support the building. So it'll span from here to here. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do one down the center as well. <clears throat> so that way the building can be moved, drug off, moved. If we move to that property over there and Matt doesn't want the shed anywhere over here anymore, we can, we can ex actually remove it. Because if I, if I put piers and attach it to the to the earth basically it's going to be impossible to get off so doing it this way it'll slide right off go to move it over there if we need to someday um, it won't be permanent and and rather than pouring an entire slab which it's not really our property these are easier to remove because they're only 16 inches wide anyway that's the plan so we'll get started on this other side of this form put one down the center um, form out the ends and then um, we'll get it poured hopefully monday or tuesday Mike, yeah got the ego fan going yeah, it's on very low speed. Yesterday we didn't have it. We were sweaty yesterday. I drank a gallon of water while I was out here yesterday. Talk to me about your tools here. What are you using here, bud? My table saw from home because I didn't want to dirty up mats. Um, rear handled Milwaukee saw, uh, framing saw. Um, got our, that's not the surge, that's an M18 impact driver. Got our little level, some bits, three inch construction screws. We had to do some dirt removal, so a pick and shovel, and a sledgehammer for driving in the stakes. We got a chalk line for, for making lines where I've got to cut because I had to cut the uh, form boards to, uh, to follow the taper of the of the soil. Tape measure, two by tens, some two by fours to make stakes out of, and our ego fan, which is very important. Nice. I don't want Trevor overheating over here, nice. or you. So we're at flush with top of dirt here. If I go any lower than this, part of the building would be under, below grade, which we don't want. So I started here with grade because this is the basically the highest point, and then everything else is is this dictates everything else. So we won't be that high because the building is going to be. I'm going to have a step obviously to get in. So we're about five inches there, and about six there above asphalt. But like I said, I'll, I'm going to do a double door is my plan, the entrance and. Um, have a little step up in, or a ramp, probably a ramp, because we'll be rolling stuff in here. Probably do a ramp. You think we'll put a mini split on this thing here? I doubt that. There's no electricity out here. It's uh, not code, Mike. Mm -hmm. It's just a shed, Mike. Just a shed. I mean, there may or may not be an extension cord that runs over to that building <laughs> once in a while <laughs> that powers this up. There may be some light fixtures hung in here, but they're not they're operational. Just they're just for looking. Yeah, so. yeah they're not operational. I may, may or may not put an outlet in here, but that's just pre-wiring in case we move it and get it. Yeah, correct. So, and there, there may or may not be a mini split yeah. or a wall unit. Yeah, but it's just that's just the, to store the wall unit. It's, it's just for demonstration purposes. snapping the line because I'm going to cut it to the, you know, to the, basically to follow the, the terrain, if you will. 
So that's, uh, we start out about six inches up there and obviously it slopes down, so it's following the slope. It's a door stop. <laughs> Okay, my end goes uphill. All right, so I'm gonna cut up some steaks. Some ribeyes? <laughs> Different kind of steaks, Mike. S-T-A-K-E's. <laughs> that was pretty funny, Mike. So what we want to be is 16 inches here. Give me the tape measure. 16 on the money. Okay, so go grab a screw gun and some screws. Well, we're just leveling across from form to form. So we'll get this level and then go down to the end and level the other end and then we'll put some stakes in the middle. And then I'm gonna put some angled stakes too down where it's taller, taller form so it doesn't lean when we fill it with concrete. That's level right there. So here, try it down there. Catch it. No, not that way. Go side to side. Spot on. Okay. You can do it. I'll hold it for you. Which side? This oh, you're on camera, so do it, do it well. Yeah. Don't screw up. There you go. Throw another one in. Perfection. All right. We're right on level. Okay. So now let's come down here, grab the longest stake. Grab some screws. That's 16, and that's level right there. So go ahead and do it. That's it. I right, was getting this other form done. Trevor's going to throw some screws in those two stakes. This is nice and level off of that one. We leveled this form off of this side, so we know this is our this is our level line here. So we just level across that. We know we're all gonna be on the same plane. We'll throw one down the center next, cap off the ends. The other thing I wanna to do too is because this has got a swale in it where water naturally progresses through here, I'm gonna get some drain pipe, find the low spot, put some drain pipe, probably two, three inch drain pipes in here between the forms so that when water accumulates, it can get under the slab out to there to that catch basin. Otherwise, it's just gonna pool up over here. The other thing to do, if, if we weren't doing it like this with basically pouring a, a beam in, um, you could do like um, uh, Quickcrete sells, um, basically it's a cylindrical form, cardboard form, um, that you could, you could place in. But that it's very, it's a lot more time to set up than doing this. This is much simpler and, uh, and this will actually be very strong. So anyway, the, only th the nice thing about doing the piers, the quick creep piers is that water will obviously go around them and go underneath. So we just have to make provision for the water to get through, which is easy. Chris has uh, instructed us on this. He's uh, a yeah, chief operating officer, uh, came out yesterday and let me know that. Chief yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cooler out here than it is in my office. You got shade and a fan. It's not, I guarantee you it's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we walked in, in the yard building right now, felt like the refrigerator. <laughs> hey Chris, what you got there? That's some. Chicken stick. Chicken stick. Honey jalapeno. It was probably Bogo, wasn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, of course it was. That's good. I have early access. All you, if you want to, if you want to know what's on Bogo, you go to Chris's house. Two days where to go. Whatever he's got. Okay, let's go. That's, we just make a list. Don't even have to look at the paper. No. Chris has. Are you really? Matt's going to be very upset if you leave at 50. <laughs> he's got five years. Yeah. Right when we're at halfway to a $200 million company. You really going to retire 50? No. Okay. Me neither.
missed it. Staying here, we'll watching Trevor dig a little bit. It's good. His supervision is key. Well, just finishing up the third, but it's starting to look a little. A little sketchy outside. It's getting a little dark. There's thunder and lightning happening. But we're committed, Mike. It's, uh, it's all in the name of getting her done. So what I do here is since this now is a level line, as you can see, it's touching here, touching there, touching there. That means this is all in the same plane. So I'm using this to reference our, our boards are nine and three eighths ish tall. So I'm finding out at what point do I does nine and three eighths interfere with the soil, which is right where this is now. And then I measure back here, it's at six inches. So we're gonna carry full board up to this board and then I'm gonna cut, have a, a, an angled cut from six and it's gonna die off at nine and three eighths. So just like I did here. So this is, this is a good way to get- This is just a good way to get your, yeah. You know, once you have a level uh, established, um, what we did was I formed this side, throw a level on a board, come across, and match the height of this side with this side, then the middle one's easy. Because you just use this board, bring it up to it, and you know you're at level. So I just have this one left to do, and I'll cap off the ends. And there's, we do, I need to add filler in here where this is really tall. I'll have to add something in there, um, just to form board. I'll, that way the concrete doesn't just spill out all over the place. An inch or so doesn't matter, but you get that much, it's just gonna flow right out of there. So anyway, do that, this next, and, and then uh, cap off the ends and we'll be ready to pour concrete. So all I have left to do is uh, basically form the ends, put a board across here on all six ends. So I think it should, it'll probably take a couple weeks, two, three weeks to get it done, depending on what other projects come up. I've got Matt's shed to fix and who knows what else he might come up with between here and there. So this will be a good project. I'd like to get it framed and roofed so it's kind of watertight um, as soon as possible. Um, but anyway, cool. baby steps. Good job today, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Good job for you, Money. You, you got a little dust on your lens, Mike. That might be some sawdust. You're really up close getting those good shots for the people. Yes. It's nice of you, Mike. All right, so now that I've got the, the three beams, if you'll call it, concrete beams formed, so what I had to do is I ran the, ran the forms a little long, and then what we do is pull a, make sure that, that everything's square. So we know we want to be 20 feet long. Each one of these has to be 20 feet. Um, and then what you want to do is make sure you don't have uh, basically like a parallelogram where they're, they're kind of shifted like this or like this. So what we do is we establish the zero mark, which is here. And then we know from here to the end of that forms 20 feet. And then we pull a diagonal, which in, on a 12 by 20 um, uh, rectangle, the, the, the measurement from here 
to square would be 278 or 279 and 7 eighths inches. So I held the tape here, went over to that in the inside of the outside form and marked it at 279 and 7 eighths inches. And then we did the same thing going from there to that corner and that establishes a you know, square. So now we'll all just cap these off, uh, form it. So I'll use these lines as a reference where, well, we have to make another line here. So let's do that right now. So we know it right here, form goes to here. All the way across, there'll be a form board here. And then we'll do the same thing up there. We'll grab the string, make, string, uh, make a, uh, a line up, uh, across there with the string, cap these off with, uh, with the end, end, end forms. And then I've got to fill in down here because obviously look how much the ground slopes. We can, you know, you've got three or four inches here. So I'm gonna have to grab some, some, uh, some lumber and fill that in um, here, here, and here, probably here. <laughs> and eh, that'll be all right i think we'll just i'll just pile up some dirt there the concrete can spill out a little bit i just don't want it to flow out like this will so anyway we'll do that and then we'll be ready to pour two birds with one stone. We're gonna to go to Home Depot, get some drain pipe. I'm gonna, so, so let's give you, just, just to give you an idea. So we're building a 12 by 20. Here's a, here's a 10 by 12 for $5,000. So double that in size, you're at $10,000, right? And that's what I'm building, a 20 by 12. And that'd be 10,000. Actually, I looked online, they were like 11. Is that siding, the same one you Yeah, that's T111. So that's basically that's the design I'm going to build, similar to that, except that mine is going to be better. You know, that's that's tough shed. I, I'm not like those doors are just shady looking. They're just not like you could break into that. I feel like I, I don't I don't think they're that great. So anyway, cost of everything I'm building right now, as of now, uh, it's about not including foundation because I'd have to do a foundation anyway to set one of those on, but I'm, I'm at about 3,500 bucks all in. So it's a lot better than 10,000. Now, of course I have labor in that, but I, I don't even think you can, cause that's 12 feet long, 12 feet wide. We're making it 12 feet wide, 20 feet long. I don't know if you can even get one delivered that big. I think it comes as a kit. I got some pipe, Mike. Four inch drain pipe, Mike. That's a long walk. Yeah. I park kind of far away, don't I? It's all right. Mike, I'm sweating, even, with, even in the shade. <laughs> I feel like one of those movies that I used to watch and they were like prison movies where they're in Mississippi. All right, so last thing to do, I'm making some kickers out of some scrap wood here just on the, on the tallest part of the form. You fill this full of concrete, it's gonna have a tendency to wanna open up. So throw some in at an angle and uh, doesn't need to be in very far, just about like that. And that's not gonna lean now. If I put a, throw a screw in there, do a couple more of these. And see that doesn't move now. So I already did a couple on that one. I'll do another one on this side, probably one more here, and one more there, and uh, maybe a couple up there. Yeah, probably six or eight of them where it's tall and it won't go anywhere. How hot is it out here? It's hot, Mike. It's uh, it's hot. It's 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 not that. I mean, it's it's abnormally hot today. You know, I mean, if I was just standing out here hanging out by the pool, sure. had a nice cool iced tea, it wouldn't yeah. be bad. But when you're working, oh, and then we have to do the drain pipe next. Oh, yeah. Still have to do that. Right. So let me get all the rest of these kickers in, and then I'll uh, I'll get that drain pipe set. Okay, so I'll throw some tape over it just so any mud that sneaks past doesn't get in the pipe. Okay, all right, Mike. So, 
there's our lowest point right there. Since this is the lowest spot right here, you know, the water will just, instead of pooling up, it'll find its way through the pipe. And then water runs this way too, so it'll pool up under here. So we want to pick the lowest spot on every one of these to uh, put this. I might have enough to do a couple on each one. I think I do. All right, so I'm, I'm done with forming. Um, as you can see, I put in some four inch drain pipe. So what I will do is I'll take some, uh, I'll go get some painters caulking and caulk around from form to pipe to completely seal that off. So that way no, uh, there's no concrete can, can dribble in there, make it easier for me when I take the forms off and you know, there's no, no concrete uh, between that and the, and the pipe. So that's all I really have to do and then just wait for concrete. It's gonna be plenty stout. I mean, this was a pain in the butt. There's a lot that went into this only because this is so far out of level ground. So this is 16 and a half, almost 17 inches deep here. And at the thinnest up there, it's four inches thick. So, and I dug that down simply so uh, this end wouldn't be so high out of the ground. If I'd put that on top, at top of grade, this would be another four inches taller at the asphalt. So I picked the, the highest point, dug down, so we wanted a minimum four inches thick on the concrete, which is there. Everything else kind of just had to go off of that. So um, it, obviously it slopes all this way. So as we get further away from that form, it's, it's definitely thicker here. So this is probably, I haven't calculated yet, but I, I'm guessing this is about two and a half yards of concrete-ish. Um, so I'll, I'll do some calculations. And I, I, I told him I wanted three just for round number, but I can always adjust that right before I make the last call to tell him the exact amount. Um, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll capture that. I think that should be another video. I might, yeah, we'll do that on so a second one, get this done. How many hours are you in this right here? Um, prep work a lot. Yeah, because I had to dig and everything. I mean, this is probably 16 hours worth of work. You know, it doesn't look like a lot because it, but you have to, you know, getting all this stuff to level and then filling in the form so they follow the, the existing grade and getting all the tops of these three, uh, you know, within, you know, a sixteenth of an inch of each other as far as level goes. Getting it square, get, you know, it's got to be 20 foot plus you don't want, you don't want it to be a parallelogram. So you have to pull diagonals and make sure everything's, everything's square because the foundation is, is what the building's going to be on. So if it's out of square, Theoretically, the building would be too, so we don't want that. So anyway, it's quite involved. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but it takes time to do it, especially out in this heat. It takes a little longer because <laughs> I keep having to go get more water. Huh? It feels like 105. Is that what the heat index says? 105? Anyway, so we'll uh, see you next video. All right, so out of the scrap wood, I'm just making some kickers because this is a tall part of the form. It'll have a tendency to want to lean. So you throw in some kickers and that'll hold it Oops. So you throw in some kickers. Let's say that over again. <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. You throw in some kickers and then you kick them out of the way.